Hey everyone, welcome to our first video in our video setup guide for our Aquarex Jellyfish Aquarium. Uh, now if you're joining, this video and this series has been put together for those that have just purchased an aquarium and are looking to get it set up, understand what all the parts are, all the way through to completion of adding your jellies to the aquarium. This is also a really good series for those that are looking to buy the uh, package and would like to learn a little bit more about it. What we'll do in the first video is we'll go through the unboxing process, pull all of the accessories out, have a bit of a chat about the tank itself, and then have a look at all the accessories and understand what they are, and then we'll get straight into the setup process. The first things first guys, just the aquarium package itself. Now this is our 16 litre Aquarex jelly model. Uh, it comes in two colours, white and black, so you've got a bit of choice depending on the location. Uh, it's a fairly small desktop size aquarium, really good for office spaces or kitchen bench top, kids bedrooms or even your sort of business reception areas. The package comes in three variations. So we offer a tank only model, which does include all of the base accessories. We also have a jelly ready package, which has everything plus our specialized products from Reef Revolution. It just doesn't include the jellies. And then we have our premium model, which is the jelly inclusive model, which comes with a uh, redeemable voucher to allow you to redeem the jellies at a later point. All right, so first things first, let's get the aquarium out and have a look at what's inside. So there's plenty of padding inside the package as well, so you have minimal concerns with the aquarium getting damaged. Um, this is what you'll see when you'll open your box for the first time. Now it's important to note that all the accessories for the aquarium are inside the aquarium itself. So there's a lot packed inside here. We're going to get it out now and have a good look at it. What we'll do first is we'll just get the aquarium out. I know every aquarium is, is wet tested as well, so you will see a sticker on the top for that. As I said, all of the accessories are inside the aquarium, so we're going to have a look at those in a second. Now you will see there are some connections on the back. If you're wondering what they're for there, in case you want to add a chiller to the aquarium, or you might want to add it to uh, a larger filtration system if you've already got an aquarium running. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is pull everything out of the aquarium and lay it out, and we'll have a bit of a chat about what everything is. Well, let's just have a quick look in the top of the aquarium just so we understand the layout here. Uh, this compartment here is obviously where your jellies go. This little square structure here is actually called the spray bar, and that's what's uh, sending water into the aquarium. We'll have a closer look at that one in a second. This little panel here is just a little weir. That's responsible for keeping the water level in the aquarium the same at all times. This compartment here is where your filter sponge is going to go. This one here is where our ceramic biomedia lives, and then the water passes through into this chamber where our pump is located and the pump pushes water back up through this tube into the spray bar. Uh, this little structure here is just a little cable tidy, just so you haven't got any messy cables on the outside of the aquarium. Uh, you'll see it's quite a large filtration compartment. We've tried to maximize as much as we could. Uh, the larger your filtration area and the larger the overall volume of the system is, the more stability you're gonna have. What we'll do now is we'll pop you down and have a closer look at the side of the aquarium just to explain how the flow works and how this spray bar works. So as I mentioned, this structure here is what we call our spray bar. On the underside of that, there's a series of holes and it basically pushes water down this wall here, up this curve and this constant circular motion creates uplift, which is what keeps your jelly suspended. That's what makes this quite unique compared to fish tanks. Fish tanks are not designed to create that style of flow. With jelly tanks, we're looking to specifically just create enough circular flow to lift them off the bottom and keep them suspended in the middle. The less they're touching the walls, the better. This structure here as well is also quite unique for jelly aquariums. It's generally always located under the spray bar and this is where your water's leaving the tank. Um, this always has quite a large surface area and that prevents your jellies getting stuck on the side. Also down the bottom, you'll see the three lights. This is where we can change the color of the aquarium. So what we'll do now is we'll get the accessories laid out. We'll set this aside um, and come back to it shortly. So taking a look at all of the accessories laid out, you'll see there's quite a lot here um, that's included with the package. 
As I mentioned before, there's a bit of variant in the three packages we offer. Everything you see here is what's included in the premium uh, jelly inclusive model. The jelly ready package includes everything minus these Reef Revolution products you see here, as does the aquarium only package. That includes all of this equipment to the right hand side as well. Uh, nice easy one to start us off with, power supply, I think we all know why we need that. This connects to a splitter on the underside of the aquarium, uh, so you only need the one power supply to power both the light and the uh, pump. Next up we have our little cleaning sponge, uh, nice and simple, a little bit of extension but this is what you can use to clean the inside of the aquarium. We have our light controller, this is the fun one. You can obviously change to all these different colours, you can change brightness, uh, different fades and also the speed of those fades. We've got our hydrometer. So this is a saltwater marine aquarium and so salinity is important. These can be quite handy, it's just important to understand how to use them. If they get any air bubbles in them, uh, they'll give you very faulty readings. So we'll uh, test that out later so you understand how to get the best out of this piece of equipment. We've got a simple siphon, self-starting with this pump. So you can use this to clean off any waste on the bottom of your aquarium. As I mentioned before, we do have uh, chiller connections on the back. So these are just, just some additional hoses to help you should you decide to add a chiller. We've got our little handling net here. Uh, these are typically used for handling of brine shrimp and artemia. So they're a really, really fine net nice and soft so they work really well for handling of the jellies when you need to remove them. We've got our filter sponge so this is what lives in that first filtration compartment and this is responsible for removing some of the larger waste leaving the aquarium such as excess food. Next up we have our ceramic biomedia. So this is really important if, you, if you're new to aquariums and you're wondering why this is important. With aquariums it's not just a container of water there is beneficial bacteria that's living within your filtration system on your biomedia and that is responsible for converting toxic things like ammonia to less toxic things in your aquarium. Very important, so we'll get into that later. For the Reef Revolution products, we've got a few things that are included. We've got jellyfish salt. Now all of these products were made specifically for the Aquarex Jellyfish Aquarium in partnership with Reef Revolution. And so we have made changes to all of these products to really boost the, the key things and the key supplements that jellyfish require. We've got two pouches that are included with the package. Uh, you will only need around 560 grams to start the aquarium. We'll basically use one and a half of these to get close enough to the salinity figure that we're looking for. And then you've got a bit of spare left over. Next up we have Jellyfish Biostart. So as I mentioned, beneficial bacteria will be living within your filtration system. Jellyfish Biostart gives us a really good kickstart for that uh, aquarium cycle that we need to achieve. We have Jellyfish Nutrition. The jellyfish do have a fairly varied diet and different requirements. This is just to, to really help boost some of those essential supplements that they do need. And last but not least, the most important, jellyfish food. Uh, again, produced with Re Re Revolution, with jellyfish in mind. So it's, it's very similar to coral food, but there's been some specific changes made based on some of the requirements of jellies and what they, what they need and what will help them thrive. So that comes with a little spoon as well. This will last you a very long time. Like you'll easily get 12 months out of this. And for all of the Reef Revolution products, there are some aquarium stores stocking them, but we also stock them at aquarex.com.au as well if you need top ups. So that's uh, basically it for the accessories. What we'll do now is get into actually setting up the aquarium. So I'll bring it back into position and we'll start adding all of these products and understanding where they go. I'm going to start here with our filter sponge that just lives under here. Next up guys, we're going to add our ceramic biomedia. So you've got two bags of this included and that just goes straight into this compartment here. Bag number two. We do have a bit of space in the top as well, so if you did want to add additional biomedia, you certainly can. Now the biomedia compartment is quite deep, it goes all the way to the bottom and we have doubled the sort of recommended amount of biomedia needed, so you have already got quite a good head start there. So they're the main things that you need to add to the top. You should not need to do anything to your pump. 
but if you wanted to understand how it works, you just simply remove it here. It just slides off fairly easily. It's just a really small little aquarium pump, 200 liters an hour. Uh, and yeah, that's how that one lives in there. During transport, you know, there is every chance that this little cap here may have come off. So that might be one reason you might want to have a look at it. But uh, yeah, so it just slots straight back into this tube here. So next thing for us is to add the salt to our aquarium. Now, best practice is to grab yourself a small bucket and we're gonna mix the salt into there with some water first. Now, as far as the water you use, the, the best water you can possibly use is reverse osmosis water, which you can purchase from marine aquarium stores. You can also use distilled water, which is exactly what I'm gonna be using. And you can purchase that from hardware stores, and also local food centers as well. Now, if you don't have the salt as part of your package, you can simply grab some salt water from most marine aquarium stores as well. We're ready to add our water. Uh, as I mentioned before, you need 560 grams of salt to create 16 liters of water at 32 parts salinity. Here we have 700 grams. And I'm gonna add one full bag and a half bag. I'm gonna add some fresh water to that and mix it in. Really doesn't matter you know, how big the bucket you're using is I would recommend, you know, anywhere from five to a 10 liter bucket. The main thing is the amount of salt you're using. We're just using this to make it a bit easier for us to get a bit aggressive stirring the salt in before we pour it into the aquarium. What we're gonna do is undo the salt packet and pour it straight in. So I've added one full packet and I'm just gonna add about half of the other packet. Now you could certainly use some kitchen scales to be really accurate. With the sort of uh, amounts we're talking, we're sort of talking between getting our salinity to around that 32 part. Uh, if we added a little bit too much, we can go as high as 35 part salinity. What I'm going to do now is just go get myself some distilled water and top this up. I've added some uh, water to this. So now you just want to use anything, it can be a measuring spoon or similar, and just stir in that salt as much as you can. All right, I'm pretty happy with where that is. What we're gonna do now is simply pour it into the aquarium. I start by filling up the actual aquarium portion as much as I can, and then we'll uh, fill up the filtration area separately. Oops, so that's all of our salt initially. You'll see there's still a bit of salt in the bottom of the bucket. So I'm just gonna keep filling this one up with distilled water and pouring it in. Okay, so you can see that the aquarium is nearly full. What I'm gonna do is stop when I get a little bit closer to the top. I'm gonna stop around there. Uh, the reason for that is I'm now gonna fill the filtration compartment. And when we turn this on, you'll notice all the water kind of balances out. The aquarium will fill itself up and the filtration compartment will drop. I'm gonna fill this one up separately now. I'm going to stop there. Uh, you'll see I've filled up the filtration area to about two to three centimeters from the top. Uh, the reason I'm going to stop there is we're actually at the stage now where we're quite happy to power this on. And um, when we power it on, as I said before, you're going to see this filtration area drops a bit as it fills this area up completely. And then we can do a little top up to the filtration area and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and power the aquarium on. Um, I've hooked up my power supply and the splitter cable is already connected to both the light and the pump. So when I plug this in, it's going to turn both on. Let's do it. And there we have it. Uh, almost immediately, you're going to notice, as I said, the filtration compartment drops. You're going to start hearing a little bit of a hum from the pump. It is really quiet, but you'll hear just enough of a hum to know it's working and you'll start seeing uh, water and particles moving through the aquarium. I'll give you a bit of a closer look just so we can you know, determine how well the pump is working, make sure you can see flow through the aquarium. So if you can see, you'll just see the water sort of moving just over this weir here into this filtration area. And um, that's a good telltale sign that we've got nice water flow. And as we look from this angle, one really obvious sign of flow is you'll see where the spray bar is. You've got some bubbles, that's it pushing the air through the aquarium. 
because uh, we've just added salt, you can see all the salt mixing in the water and you should see little particles just moving in a circular motion in the tank. And so from here, I'm, uh, I'm happy with the positioning, I'm happy the aquarium's running. All I'm gonna do now is just do a little top up to the filtration area. Now, as far as water level in that filtration area goes, try and never go any, any higher than like a centimeter from the top, just so you don't have an issue with it trying to go down this little cable tray here. As far as uh, the lowest I would allow it to go, you always wanna keep your filtration media uh, your biomedia submerged so just try and keep water level above that i'm just going to top that up here and we can slide our lid back on top now one thing we do want to know at this stage is just to get an idea of our salinity now i would recommend after you've added this water and you've you've started your pump give it at least an hour before you do a test you'll still have salt mixing into the aquarium so your number won't be accurate initially so I'd recommend leaving it at least an hour before you do a test. To do this, all you need to do is fill this hydrometer up to the water level marking you can see here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You can use your included syringe. You can also just get real messy and dunk the whole thing in the aquarium. So as I mentioned before, uh, these can be really handy little devices, but we do have to be really conscious of air bubbles. Basically, the concept is this uh, little needle here is lifted up by the salt content. If you've got air bubbles attached to it, it's going to obviously cause it to lift as well. And it's going to tell us our salinity is much higher than it is. So it's quite important that you make sure you flick away all of the air bubbles inside this. All right, so I've flicked off all my air bubbles. And as you can see, our salinity is sitting around the 31 mark. So that's, that's pretty good. That salt does look like it's still mixing in the aquarium a little bit, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that go higher. Uh, for jellies, our safe range is between 30 and 35 parts salinity. So if you're anywhere in there, then I would be quite comfortable. And we can just pull that aquarium water uh, straight back in. Now at this stage, guys, the final thing we need to do uh, to get this aquarium cycling is to add our jellyfish bio start. The amount you add to this is on the back, but it's 10 drops every single day for the first 30 days. And then after that, as a bit of maintenance, you can add one drop daily. But for the cycling process, we just need to add 10 drops daily for this. And you can add this directly to the aquarium. Adding it to the aquarium will give you a decent mixture. If you do add it to the filtration compartment, not a major issue either. And so from here, all we have to do is patiently wait, which is the hardest challenge. A cycling process takes about 30 days and is the most important part of this process to make sure that uh, the aquarium is safe for jellies. So really important that we do follow that. As far as what you'll need to do during that 30 days, other than adding our jellyfish bio start, the one thing you may notice is your aquarium may evaporate. So depending on the temperature and the conditions, if you just keep an eye on your filtration area for any dropping of water, being a salt water aquarium, when we have evaporation, we don't lose the salt, but we do lose the water. So all that's actually evaporating is fresh water. That's really important because when you're topping this up, you want to top it up with fresh water, not salt water. If you do salt water, your salinity is going to increase further than it should. My recommendation is always just to keep a water bottle handy with some of that clean fresh water that we used earlier and just keep an eye on it and every few days or whatever you need just give it a, a little top up of that fresh water. All right everyone so at this stage you're probably wondering when can I add jellies? Now as we've sort of touched on there is a 30 day cycling process. The cycling process can take up to six weeks. It's a biological process so it's important to understand um, that timeline may vary. Now for testing your water, there's two ways we can go about it. We can either just take a sample to your local marine store and ask if they could test it for you. Most marine stores, most aquarium stores even, will do this for free. Um, so that's, that's one option. You can also buy a test kit and I'll link below uh, what test kit we would recommend for that. And that'll allow you to test the, the three main parameters that we're interested in, which is our ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And that will help you understand where your aquarium at is in the cycling process and I would recommend testing your water at least once a week uh, to get your head around where you're at in the process. 
to understand a little bit more about the cycling process, we'll include a link below just so you can understand what it is in your parameters you're actually looking for. And so from here, I bet everyone wants to have a play with their lights. So uh, yeah, as mentioned before, you can select a whole array of colors depending on what you'd like. And you can also select some fade options, which will have it uh, slowly transitioning through some colors. What you'll notice with jellies, due to the translucent nature of their bodies, it illuminates them and less of the tank. So it's quite, quite cool when they are in the display, you'll see them glowing the color that you're putting on this light. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. That pretty much concludes everything you need to know for the setup of your aquarium. Um, again, main things you need to do at this stage are adding your jellyfish bio start 10 drops a day for the 30 days. Um, get your water tested once a week, play around with your lights, obviously that's what most people want to do at this stage. And then we'll regroup and in the next video we'll actually go through the process of accepting your jellies and getting them settled into their new aquarium. Thanks for watching.